Hi everyone. A lot of problems in maths are easy to state, but have so far resisted all attempts to solve them. I want to tell you about three of these today, and they're all related to geometry in some way. The first of them is called the happy ending problem. And the reason it's called that is that the two mathematicians who first worked on it, George Zekeres and Esther Klein, actually met through their collaboration and eventually got married. The problem itself, though, hasn't yet so far found a happy ending, as we'll soon discover now as we talk about these three unsolved problems in geometry. Start by marking five random dots on a sheet of paper. It turns out that you'll always be able to join four of them so as to form a convex quadrilateral, a four-sided shape in which all the corners are less than 180 degrees. To be sure of making a pentagon, you'd need nine dots. For a convex hexagon, the minimum number of dots jumps to 17. But beyond that, we're into unknown territory. No one knows the least number of random dots needed to ensure you could draw a convex shape with seven sides or more. The formula m equals 1 plus 2 to the n minus 2, where m is the minimum number of random dots required and n is the number of sides in the shape, works for the quadrilateral, pentagon and hexagon. It's suspected it may continue to work for more complicated shapes, but no one's yet been able to prove it. Here's another outstanding mystery, understandable with just pen and paper, for you to while away the hours. Draw a closed loop. It can be any shape you like, just so long as it's a simple loop, which means that it doesn't cross over itself and it has no loose ends. We call such a loop a Jordan curve. In 1911, the German mathematician Otto Toplitz put forward this proposal. Every Jordan curve contains an inscribed square. Known as the Toplitz conjecture or inscribed square hypothesis, the suggestion is that inside any simple loop you can always draw a square so that all four corners touch the loop. It's easy to draw examples where this is true, a perfect circle being the most obvious case, but the question is, does the Toplitz conjecture hold for every possible Jordan curve? You can amuse yourself all day long drawing different loops and trying to find places where a square will exactly fit, but that proves nothing. What about the infinitely many other Jordan curves that you haven't had time to draw or test? The Toplitz conjecture has been shown to hold for a large class of Jordan curves, namely those that are convex and smooth. The key point about a convex curve is that a straight line drawn between any two points on the curve will never cross over it. Smooth, in the mathematical sense, means that the slope of a line that just touches the curve, a tangent, never jumps abruptly from one point to the next. In plain language, the curve has no corners. But Jordan curves can be both concave and non-smooth, and this complicates the problem immensely. In fact, mathematicians have shown that the equivalent of the Toplitz conjecture holds true for every type of Jordan curve in the case of a number of other shapes, including triangles and rectangles, but squares, it turns out, are trickier. And so the hunt is still on for a proof that works for every possible curve, even those that have pointy bits or bow outwards. Stepping up a dimension brings us to an unsolved problem that takes us back to our school days. At some point, we all learn about Pythagoras' theorem. In a right angle triangle, the square of the hypotenuse, the longest side, equals the sum of the squares of the other two sides. A Pythagorean triangle is a special case where all the sides have a whole number of lengths, 
familiar examples are the 3, 4, 5 triangle, because 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared, and the 5, 12, 13 triangle. In three dimensions, Pythagoras' theorem works equally well, but we need four numbers to take account of the lengths in the x, y, and z directions, plus that of the diagonal connecting the end points. This brings us to the so-called perfect cuboid problem. Just as there are Pythagorean triangles where the lengths of all three sides are whole numbers, so there are some cuboids where the three edges in the x, y and z directions and the spatial diagonal across the box, four lengths in all, have integer values. But each of the three faces of a cuboid also has a diagonal. The perfect cuboid problem asks, are there any boxes where all seven of these numbers, giving the lengths of the three edges plus the four diagonals, are whole numbers? Mathematicians have come up with a few near misses. The shape known as an Euler brick is like a perfect cuboid, but its spatial diagonal doesn't have to be an integer length. The easing of this restriction allows solutions to be found. The smallest Euler brick was discovered not by Euler himself, but by a contemporary of his, the German mathematician Paul Halke, in 1719. It has edges of length 44, 117, and 240, and face diagonals of length 125, 244, and 267. There are infinitely many Euler bricks, and various methods are known for generating them, but the perfect cuboid, or perfect Euler brick, where the spatial diagonal must also be of integer length, has so far proved a stumbling block. Exhaustive searches have shown that the shortest edge of such a shape must be at least 5 times 10 to the 11 long. Various other conditions are known that a perfect cuboid must satisfy, such as that one side must have a length that's divisible by 5. One side, two face diagonals and the spatial diagonal must be odd, and one edge or spatial diagonal must be divisible by 13. Although mathematicians haven't yet tracked down one of these beasts, they also haven't been able to show that none exists. The search continues. Thanks very much for watching. Please subscribe to our channel if you haven't already. And I'll see you again very soon to discover more maths.